this video, I'm going to answer this question. How much annual interest income should you report to IRS if you purchase a coupon bond at a discount? So this is an example. Uh, actually, example is from IRS website. It's uh, from the publication, uh, publication 1212. Uh, so this is a link. I'm going to link this link at the description of this video. So uh, this example say on January 1st of the year 1, you bought a 15-year 10% um, debt instrument of a corporation at a regional issue for the $86,235.17. Uh, According to the prospectus, the debt instrument mature on the December 31st of the year 15 at a stated uh, redemption price of the 100,000. The year maturity is 12% um, compounded semi-annually. So, um, so basically based on this information, we can, uh, this is the uh, we can list this. So here, the year maturity and the coupon rate, they both are the, uh, for the each payment period rather than the annually. So it's six months uh, rather than annual. So annual is uh, 12% and the 10%. So basically, you can buy this uh, bonds at this price then uh, in the mature, which is the face value of the bonds, is $100,000. So, given this information, how should you report the uh, annual in interest income uh, to the IRS? So, if you, let's say, first of all, if you buy this bonds just at a face value $100,000, so basically you have, a, uh, you know, a uh, Six months the coupon is five five thousand. So annual coupon is ten thousand. So you basically coupon payment, which is your interest. So you can just pay, uh, you know, uh, tax on the interest income ten thousand. However, now you 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 buy these bonds at a discount, which is less than the par value. So the difference of the price, um. Difference of the price, you, uh, you have to spread this, uh, those difference, uh, within this term of the fifteen year, uh, in the form called OID, and uh, to add to your discount, uh, to your add to your annual interest rate to be taxed. Okay, so the price of the difference is not taxed at a capital gain. So there's no capital gain when you hold about the year to maturity, okay? So there's never, never a capital gain. So it's uh, all interest income, which is uh, going to be taxed at, a, you, uh, at a, your ordinary in, uh, income tax rate. So uh, this one, the difference of the price is although you don't receive, uh, you know, the, the gain, at the end of the 15 years, but you have to pay the interest on the, um, uh, on the price difference, which is that spread over uh, throughout the term of the 15 years uh, in the form of the OID. So this question is, how do you get the OID? Then what is OID? So I have this definition, it's from IIS website, say, OID is a form of the interest. You generally include OID in your income as it accrued over the term of the debt instrument, whether or not you receive any payment from the issuer. So basically, you have to think this OID is a phantom uh, income. You not really receive them, but you have to pay tax on them. So. In order to figure out of the OID, we use something, uh, the method called constant yield method. Uh, so it's from IRS. Then uh, how to figure out OID, uh, 
This is the original issue discount on the debt instrument issued after 1984 using constant yield method. So this is called constant yield method. So everything I'm listed here is called constant yield method. Well, the constant yield, which means they use constant yield to maturity to calculate this. So how this been calculated? Let's see the how this. See, uh, this is the interest income that I have here is the basis times the yield to maturity. So basically, use your yield to maturity, then times the basis. I have here the taxpayer's basis. However, for first one, you should the first one the basis of your bonds is the price of the bonds. So you use the yield to maturity times the price of the bonds. Which means you can see here that you get this, uh, this interest. Basically, this is your interest income. However, uh, we have to figure out the ORD. So you use this interest income minus the coupon payment. You get the ORD. So, um, then you can you can think another way. You are. For the six months, for one period of your interest income is equal to your coupon payment, then plus the OID, so that's it. You get six months the interest income, right? So how about you get the next period of the income? How you get this one? Uh, so this one is equal to your year to maturity. Times the basis of the taxpayer. The first one, the basis is the price. The second one, the basis is equal to this one is equal to your OID plus the price. I say it again. It's equal to your first OID plus the price. So because you have to adjust this price higher. Uh, so then, in order to get your uh your um you know next uh you know this basis, so then once you get this taxpayer the basis in the first year the period right, so then you can uh you can get the the second income interest rate so equal to the yield to maturity times the basis, then you get this one. Then you get this uh interest income. Interest income you minus the coupon rate, you get the OID. So basically, this is your first two period of the payment. You add them together is your annual interest in the uh, interest income. That's how you get it. Then also, this is annual OID is equal to the OID each period. Add them together, you get this one. Then here I say add the OID three hundred fifty eight point six seven to the ten thousand interest. Uh, you report on your income tax for the year one. So that's from basically it's from IRS website. That's how they say that. So if you understand that, so they basically say well, uh, this I want the. The price difference, um, you know, the price, the purchasing price, eventually, like you, you know, you receive, like you sell the bonds at a uh one thousand in maturity, right? So you are increase your uh taxpayers basis. The basis increase each year, uh, all the way until the last period payment. Your basis is exactly equal to redemption price. Then you don't have any dip uh pr price difference in this case. So you don't have to pay any tax on the price difference. You already pay the tax on the uh OID because the price difference uh spread. Uh, over the fifteen years term, so if you add all the OID together, you will exactly you could uh get the the difference of the price. So that's how you understand that. You also how you calculate the OID.